Hello to everyone who watches this. My name is Carly and this is my second room tour I've uploaded to this channel. Considering that this is only my fifth video on YouTube, you may think it's strange that it's only been around two months and I'm already posting another room tour. I don't intend for this channel to only be filled with room tours, though I do love designing and making other spaces. I'm thrilled when I'm given an empty slate and motivated to transform it into something brightly coloured and what I consider beautiful. So if you enjoy this content, there will be more interior and exterior design videos to come, but those will not be the only videos on this channel. I'm currently working on making an episodic audio show a la Welcome to Night Vale that will be based on the book The Artist, The Audience and A Man Called Nothing. Each chapter will be an episode or two where I'll be speaking as the narrator, retelling the story of an immortal interviewer who becomes obsessed with an actor called Mr. Nothing. You can expect the first episode of that next week if you're interested. So some context for the last room tour, I recently moved house after 14 years of living in the same space and I wanted to document how I designed my room, as well as make a tribute of sorts to the house which was essentially my childhood home. Since moving I filled up my new room with all of my old stuff and also, as you can see, an almost insufferable amount of art. I filmed this because we're renting and I inevitably had to take all these prints down since you're not allowed to stick anything on the walls if they are not your walls. So I found myself in a sort of similar situation of wanting to capture how I designed the space before I had to change it. That being said, please join me as I walk through all the treasures, memories and works of art I've accumulated over the years. This is going to be a bit of a longer video, there are many stories to tell and lots of memories to reminisce, so take a seat and make yourself comfortable. So this is the Art Nouveau door, these were actually pages taken from last year's calendar. Since Elf having Alphonse Mouha introduced to me in high school, I've been an avid devotee of Art Nouveau. These old advertisements in particular make me smile. That at the bottom is another high school creation, here is some detail on that. I used watercolour pastel origami boats made out of the pages of this really bad book I bought on a library sale and cooking oil. Um, it was lying around so I thought I'd use it. And now we're coming to this old wheel tray I found on the side of the road and decided to paint it over with blue and white. I used to keep my plant supplies on there, but I have since moved it outside, as you can see. It was fun for the couple of years I had it, but now I use it to hold actual plants. Here you can see some freshly pruned mint enjoying the sun. That mint plant actually used to be in my room, but I had to take it outside for some therapy when mildew started growing on it. You'll see him later in the video. And now we come to the first reveal of the wall, obviously watercolour is the main medium used here. Another art related thing that was introduced to me in high school. I've been keeping these prints for years now and so I didn't have a shortage of things to stick up here really. In a way I am glad I had to take all this down because it did distract me from work. I also realized that there were a lot of eyes I'd drawn staring at me and that ranged from amusing to disturbing. I might have to make another room tour to show you what it looks like now, but three in a year I think may be a little excessive. Coming up, these are all the wind chimes I've collected over the years, as well as the ones I make and sell. All the beaded ones have been crafted by yours truly. You may have also noticed there's no curtain over the window and that's because I don't sleep in this room. I'm lucky enough to have the space just dedicated to work. I'm sleeping and working better for separating those two things though, I have to say. There's that mint we were talking about. And here we come to the work desk, which is actually a small dining table, so it's nice and big. Now these are two lovely notebooks I wanted to show you that I bought off Booktopia. This one with art from Amy Stewart, who does these 
mosaic maximalist paintings I'm a huge fan of. This cover is a painting of hers called Treasure Hunt Bookshelves. I love the detail in this, and every painting of hers I've seen has just stunned me. This is what magic looks like to me. It also reminds me a lot of Howl's Room and Howl's Moving Castle, which has certainly been an inspiration for my own interior design. The other book I wanted to show you is of the famous French black cat, the Chat Noir. This painting was actually a poster made to advertise a nightclub of the same name. Some funny trivia about this is after this place became a popular, a cafe opened in St. Petersburg called the Stray Dog Cafe. I like the idea of going to France for the cabaret cats and then to Russia for the dogs. Both were apparently famous meeting places for writers, poets and artists. I actually have the same post on various items in my room. You've already seen one on the door. See if you can spot the third black cat. Now to the rest of the desk. This container I got from a thrift store by my house for a couple of dollars. The place is called Hidden Treasures, which I think is an apt name. This lamp here uh, was gifted to me by my beautiful sister two Christmases ago. I don't know the name of the shop she got it from, but it's incredible how well it suits me. She knows me well. I also love the slightly disturbing expression painted on the sun. And now we come to a framed division board of sorts. You can't really see because of the glare and dust, but here are some of my idols um, among those Hayao Miyazaki, Agatha Christie, Diana Wynne Jones, and Van Gogh, along with some art I love. Here are the plants I used to have, quite a sparse bunch, but as you'll see, I have upgraded and changed some things around. I've adopted a few more leafy children recently. You know, with plants, once you get into gardening, it's at least a shame and at most a tragedy to not further this peaceful passion. This room has lovely big windows, so they do well in here. I hope to get more smaller ones, like maybe some cacti and place them around. For now, I have this gorgeous collection, as well as a beautiful fern you'll see in a moment, sitting on the desk over there, which used to be empty space. I do name them all, but what I actually call them is far too embarrassing to admit, so we'll just leave it at that. That was a desk onto the other corner. Here we have two more gifts from my sister, that record player and that little bow truckle in the middle of the trumpet she begrudgingly got me in the Melbourne Harry Potter store. Uh, here we see more acrylic paintings that I've stacked and some more pages from that Art Nouveau calendar at the top there. You can see from the way I paint with acrylic it's much more of an indulgent practice. When I paint to relax these flowing cloud-like pictures come out. They're very easy to do and they don't take much time. And here's my little Xbox 360, which is basically just a vehicle for me to play Dragon Age again and again. Thank you to my brother for that. On this shelf, I keep displays of these curious things I found on the beach, as well as some market knickknacks, and all of my paints, my beads, string, tape, you know, crafting materials. This is kind of an everything shelf, which is to say it's an ugly mess, and since filming this, I have organized this far better, you'll be pleased to know. On to the jewelry section. So obviously I collect a lot of things, but I do try to create more than I consume, a philosophy I first heard from a smart friend of mine. This is where I store the boxes, bracelets, necklaces, and some pottery pieces I've made as a display and inventory for my Etsy shop, The Joking Jenkins. That name comes from a book I'm writing about a family of three circus performers who traveled the world by train, ship, and hot air balloon. Here's the family in question. As you can imagine, somewhere along their adventure, things start to get a little mad. 
Obviously I'm concerned with how everything's displayed, so I try to make things look as interesting as possible, while also being accessible. I use a lot of shells in what I make, and I used to be quite obsessive about collecting them. I had a Marie Kondo moment when my mum saw the boxes and boxes of shells I'd collected over the years, and asked me if I really needed them, and of course I didn't. I hardly used a fraction of what I have. So that summer we packed everything up in a big bag and took it to the sea and returned the shells to the water. I still collect shells, but I'm careful about it. As a kind of compensation for taking from the sea, I like to bring a bag and fill it up with any trash I find as a kind of thanks. In my years of beachcombing, I've come across some interesting items from sea pottery to sea glass, which is common, to dried up creatures and this incredible shark tooth, which I think may be from a great white. When I found it, it was nearly hidden in a pile of dried shells. I love the sea for this reason, just thinking that somewhere in those waters is this dinosaur of an animal swimming around losing his or her tooth. It's an old tooth, so it's dulled and yellow. I wish I knew more about it, but I like the mystery of it. These are bracelets I make, along with some of my own shell boxes, rings and necklaces. I also love to collect jewellery. I think I've got some magpie in me because anything shiny that would fit right in a fantasy marketplace I'm drawn to. All this jewellery I've collected the, over the years has either been from markets or gifts or even passed down from my mum. They're all their own lovely memory. I try to display things as though I were a customer walking into a magic shop and just looking for some fantastic item. So you'll see me using lots of old jars and boxes and even stones to show off my curiosities. Just show me the earrings display here. These parrots up here are my favourite. They're from an Etsy shop, and if you search Kitsch Curious Retro Bird Earrings, they'll come up. I also love these green glass drops, since they remind me of Hal Pendragon and his incredible sense of style. We come to the next shelf with this painting I did four years ago now. I remember the day I was painting it, I knew it would become something different than my other works. My mum loves the movie Dr. Zhivago, and the 1965 version has this beautiful score. And there's this one theme from the film that I love, and it's not Lara's theme, even though that is nice. It's an instrumental piece, and if you YouTube Dr. Zhivago 1965, main title by Maurice Jarre, that's J-A-R-R-E, you will be taken to another world. It is so beautiful, and I was listening to that on and on. I also entered this painting into an art show last year and put an absurd price on it so no one wouldn't buy it and take it away from me. I have become a lot better about art hoarding, it's actually why I started my Etsy shop so I could move more things to new, new people, but I still get enjoyment out of this one. I didn't win anything but my lovely sister and mum did come with flowers, it was very sweet. Here's just a quick pan over another wind chime, another shop item there. And we come to the bookshelf where I've propped up some masks, something else I like to collect. I've done all of these except for the black one here, which I got at a charity shop. I think my obsession with masks started in year nine when I went through a Stephen Fry phase and he quoted Wilde, uh, Oscar Wilde, beautifully as always. And the words were, man is least himself when he talks in his own person. Give him a mask and he will tell you the truth. And being a little high school idiot, I didn't know anything except for this one rule, which was if it sounds deep, write it down and perhaps a future, smarter, more worldly version of you will understand someday. There's a lot to be said about masks, about actors and lies and storytellers. So I took those words pretty directly and instead of analyzing the changes in my character, I just collected literal masks. There is clearly a happy mask salesman vibe going on here, and if you know that character from Zelda, he is one that's just always captured my attention. I wish there was an entire game which followed this man, but the game we got with Majora's Mask is one of my favourites. I've always been drawn to those trickster jester characters. 
I think because they're kind of pathetic and scheming, yet they're cunning. And when the world burns, they're the ones laughing as they warm their fingers. Of course, the best thing about these trickster characters is that they only work in fiction. You know, they thrive in there. In reality, I've never known a genuinely happy Joker. But, not to be distracted, we are here to enjoy my madness after all. So I'm taking you back to the wall for a closer look. I have more quotes for you up here. I've said it before, but I only wish for my life to be beautiful and in whatever way it can be, with however much conviction I can muster. So from the tempest to cloud atlas to perks of being a wallflower, I'll write down and keep any line that reminds me that this is what writers are capable of doing, this magic. With the same words you use and hear daily, they twist them into something greater. Though I did make up those quote pages when I was a lot younger, so you can tell that by the juvenile handwriting. You'll spot a lot of fools and magicians on this wall if you know your tarot cards. I'm making my own tarot deck, so I'll show you that later, a little sneak peek. It connects to a wider story which I plan to turn into a book series. And now we come to one of my favourite sections, easily the most magical part of the room. We have wands, spell bottles, frogs, chalices. I make all these wands and sell them on Etsy as you can see. Something that started off from the desire to buy a Harry Potter wand and not having the money to taking the idea of personalised wands and making them myself. I truly love to craft these things. I give them names and think of which character would wield such a thing. It's a lot of fun. I do have a favourite, but I haven't my own personal one yet. Who knows what that would look like. Moving on to these little spell bottles I make out of old alcohol samples. This one says, I have a wonderful work in a wonderful way. I give a wonderful service for a wonderful pay, which is from Florence Chauvel Shin's The Game of Life and How to Play It. It's such a fun, positive rhyme. I felt it was perfect to put on a bottle, fill it with water and beads and sticks and shells. And whenever I need a little luck with work, I shake this and say these words. And I genuinely feel better for it after. Here are all the other bottles I've made. I love to keep these around. You saw some back on the bookshelves earlier. They truly suit the aesthetic of the room. Back there is one of my pair of what I've dubbed Neptune's chalices, which are actually two plastic disposable wine cups someone drank from with their lover on the beach and then dumped into the sand. It was still sticky with wine when I came ambling down the shore talking shit with my mum about all the trash around and you know I bring a bag to pick up rubbish when walking along the beach and I was going to throw these out but I thought why not use them as a base for this idea and I'm grateful for it because I love the way they look. Who knew just sticking shells all over even the cheapest plastic could look good. And on to the lower shelf, we have a wand, a string of beads I put together, paintings used as platforms, some jewellery I keep in that lovely sunbox, thrifted of course, and my reference tarot deck I keep in a pouch in that pot. Below we have another wand, this is my current favourite as well as some tiny bottles of crystals and shells I use for one decoration and some other Etsy items. Now this painting behind here, I'll insert some photos now, is another one of my large scale favourites. I did this for my senior year art project and it was one of the pieces that made up the sum of a story I was telling through a series of paintings. Interestingly enough, I think the time I painted this was the hardest year of my life and everything I was holding within myself seemed to jump out in this storm onto the canvas. My teacher loved it and it seems to be a favourite whenever someone comes into this room and I ask them to pick out which work they like best. 
It's a little bittersweet for me to look at this, but the true magic of painting, of composing, of writing, of transforming anything, is that you can take your desperate feelings and turn them into anything other than those ugly things they are inside of you. You know, sometimes you just create to clear your head. And if you create after you've cleared your head, you may even reach a place called happy. Anyway, let's not get stuck here since we're almost done. On to this little section, another corner of magic from a poor dead bonsai that I keep around to some shell clusters I like to make, to little nature displays, and thrift store finds. Here are the rest of the ones. I keep them in this old nut box I painted over and decorated while watching a Joseph Campbell documentary, of course. YouTube recommended it to me, which I'm certainly not complaining about. I love the way they all look together like this. Now the last item on the menu, a sneak peek of the tarot deck I'm designing. I'll link some accounts where I post news of how this is going along in the description box, but I figured I can't do an art room tour without showing you the latest art I've been working on. So this is the Burning Fools tarot deck, a prelude of sorts to the Burning Fools book series I'm writing simultaneously. These are the cast of characters, but of course, like any tarot deck, like any story, and like any life really, it all begins with a fool, a trickster, a joke, and hopefully somewhere along the way, that fool can grow out of their foolishness through the trials of life. They learn the world and eventually they learn themselves, they grow old, they die a foolish death, and they return with new and bright stupidity, ready for the next big thing. But that's another story for next week's video. So six pages later in a very raspy voice, we are done with this room tour. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being the audience to my art. Um, I'm definitely the kind of fickle, insecure, eager to please artist who creates for an audience. So thank you for being that today. And apologies for the strange camera angles and shots, but I'm still getting used to this YouTube thing. I'll see you next week on Monday for the first episode of Goodbye Mr. Nothing. Until next time.